In this video, I would like to talk about the basic concept of confidence interval. So before we jump right into the concept of confidence interval, I would like to start with two simple questions. The first question is, how much time do you spend on traveling to school? How much time? Do you usually answer like, I spend 20 minutes to travel to school? So let's write this down. Do you say that I spend 20 minutes to travel to school or you prefer to say that I spend around 18 to 22 minutes to travel to school? Which answer is better? So the answer is the interval is better. So the 20 minute, we call this a point estimate because you only provide one number. And then the 18 comma 22, we call this interval estimate, interval. Why do we say the interval is better? Because the interval is more flexible. It contains more value, or you should say the interval is a range of value. So as long as you, let's say you spend 20 minutes to travel to school, that means your interval is true, right? Because 20 is between 18 and 22. So let's say you spend 19 minutes to travel to school, your interval is still true because 19 is between 18 and 22. So as long as you provide a number between 18 and 22, people cannot say you lie to them, right? So that's why we always use interval to estimate. So when people write a job description in number two, they don't say that, all right, I pay you $25 per hour because th that there is a big problem. The problem is if you say $25 per hour, that is too exact. You want to be more flexible. Again, you want to be more flexible. So when you pay people, you don't know who these people are. So when you write a job description, you never know who is going to apply for it, right? So different people have different job experience. So that's why when you set up the range of salary, you want to be more flexible. So for example, you want to pay 20 to $28 per hour, depending on experience. Sometimes people call this the DOE, right? Depending on your experience. If you uh, have no experience at all, I can start you at 22. If you have a lot of experience, I can start you at 28. So if you use an interval estimate, you are being very flexible. As long as you give them a rate between 20 and 28, then, uh, then, then you just uh, make your promise, right? Because the number you provide is between 22 and 28. So let's say you come in to, to interview and then I re after we finish the interview, I decide to pay you a 27. So that is good, right? Because 27 is between 22 and 28. But if I say in the job description, if I say $25 per hour to be exact, if I pay you 24, you are not going to be happy, right? So that's why when we, you, when we estimate when we make when we do estimation it is better to use interval estimate so what about in confidence interval point estimate versus interval estimate so a point estimate in confidence interval we are talking about one number so point estimate is one number and then interval estimate is a range of value a range of values if i ask you hey on average how much time do you spend to study for, for a final? You can say, I, uh, for point estimate, you say, I, I spend eight hours to study for the final. So this is one number. So that means for point estimate, you are using one number to estimate another number. So if you give me a number like that, so when I ask the next person, I expect that person spend eight hours to study for the final. So point estimate is you are using one number to estimate another number. What about interval estimate? So interval estimate is more flexible. You can say on average, I spend around eight to 10 hours to study for the final. So interval estimate is more flexible. And then overall, when you do confidence interval, you are doing inference. Inference means you are trying to use an interval to guess a number. So that is called inference. Uh, the point estimate is also called inference that is not a a recommended method because you are using one number to estimate another number. So what is confidence interval? Confidence interval, the way we build a confidence interval is we use a point estimate 
plus or minus margin of error. So the margin of error, we call that ME, and then the point estimate, we call that X bar. So X bar is a sample mean, right? So you start with a number, and then you plus or minus margin of error. So let's say uh, back to the previous problem, you spend eight hours to study for the final, and then your margin of error is equals to two. So that will be eight plus or minus two. So now eight. 8 plus or minus 2 and then the lower limit is 8 minus 2 equals to 6 the upper limit is 8 plus 2 equals to 10 so we just create a interval estimate all right so what is margin of error margin of error is a new vocabulary to most of you so margin of error is the greatest possible distance between the point estimate and the value of the parameter it is estimating so for the a plus or minus 2 so we consider a as a point is a point right here so that stands for a and then the minus that means you extend two units to the left and then the plus you extend two units to the right so a minus 2 is equals to 6 a plus 2 is equals to 10. So that is how we uh, interpret the margin of error. It's like airplane. You have the body of the airplane, so that is right in the middle. If you subtract a margin of error, so that will be your left wing. If you add a margin of error, so that will be your right wing. Right? So the X bar is right in the middle. So if you want to go to the left to find the lower limit, you subtract margin of error. If you want to go to the right to find the upper limit, you add a margin of error. So that's how confidence interval works. You start with one point estimate, and then you plus or minus margin of error. Margin of error has a couple other names, depending on what textbook you use. Some, some textbook call it the error bound, some textbook call it error tolerance, and some textbook call it maximum error of estimate. Uh, when I was taking my stats class, the word I use is margin of error. What is the formula to compute confidence interval? So depending on what procedure you use, so in this uh, video, I will just talk about a Z procedure. So Z procedure is like normal distribution when sigma is given. Still remember the previous lesson. When sigma is given, we use Z, right? Z normal distribution when sigma is given. So if sigma is unknown, then you follow the T procedure. Other than the T procedure, T procedure means T distribution. You have to use T distribution when sigma is unknown. And other than Z and T, we also introduce proportion. All right, and then for Z procedure, and then here is my formula. So we start with a point estimate, which is X bar, and then we plus or minus the Z the subscript is alpha divided by 2, I've explained what it is, and then you multiply the standard error, sigma, divided by square root of n. What is the purpose of doing this? The purpose of doing this is, I am asking you to use the sigma, the x bar, and the sample size to estimate mu. So when you, after you finish your job, you will get an interval like this, right? So you will get a confidence interval, a lower limit, comma, uh, upper limit. So let's say this is A and this is B. A stands for the lower limit, B stands for upper limit. What does that mean? That means we are trying to say the, pop, the, pop, the population mean, the mu, is between A and B. Again, the population mean, mu, the parameter, is between the lower limit and the upper limit. Is that means we will find out what the mu equals to? The answer is no. You are doing an inference. Again, you are doing inference. What does inference mean? You are trying to guess what mu is. You will not be able to find out the exact value of mu. Let's repeat this again. Confidence interval is a type of inference in statistics. You are using this interval to estimate or to guess what the true mean, the population mean, mu, is you will never be able to find out the exact value of mu. You are trying to guess what it is. All right, so this, in here, the confidence interval, the C, the small case, the little case C, represent confidence level. The confidence level is the probability that the interval estimate contains the population parameter. Population parameter means the mu. And then the alpha, so this uh, symbol is called alpha. It's a Greek letter, alpha. It's a Greek letter alpha. And then alpha is equals to 1 minus C to explain the confidence level. And the alpha 
we have to use a picture. So before we go into that, you have to write down this formula. So the X bar, the sigma, and the N, you can pick up that from the problem. And then regarding the Z alpha divided by two, I will show you how to find the Z in the, on the next page. So on the next page, I have a graph for you. So I have a normal curve. And then I, let's say I want to find a 90% confidence interval. And then what about this percentage? The 90%, the 95%, the 80%, the 99%, uh, where do you pick up this problem? You pick up this problem straight from the problem. So the problem will determine the confidence level for you. So suppose what we want to do is 90%, all right? So 90%, where is the 90%? The 90% is you have 90% in the middle of a normal curve, right? So do you see that in the curve right in the middle, I cut 90% right in the middle. So how much do you have left other than the 90%? So you take 100% minus the 90%, so which is the math I did on the right. So I take one minus 0 0.9 divided by two. So I still have 10% divided by two. So the remaining area, is the alpha. Do you see that other than the 90% in the middle, we still have 10% left because the total area under this bell curve is 100%. So the alpha is the remaining area. So you take the remaining area divided by two, then you have 5% on each side, right? So five plus five plus 90, then you get the total 100%. And then since you have nine, you have 5% on the left hand side and right hand side, how do you find the corresponding Z value? This is why you have to learn inverse normal distribution. If you don't know what it is or you don't remember what it is, you have to watch one of the previous video. In the previous lesson, I clearly introduced what inverse normal distribution is. Again, inverse normal distribution. I clearly explain how do you use the inverse normal command to find the Z value using the corresponding area. So we have 10% divided by two. So the 10% divided by two, meaning that I put 5% in the first number and then the zero and one mu is equals to zero. Standard deviation is equals to one because every time you use Z, Z means standard normal. All right, so you do this in your calculator. So you go to second and then you go to verse and then you will find inverse norm and then the area is 10%, the remaining area, alpha divided by two. So that's why the subscript is alpha divided by two. And then the mean is equals to zero, the standard deviation is equals to one, and then they will give you the corresponding Z value. The value they give you is always negative. The reason is they assume the 5% the you input is on the left-hand side, again, Every time you use this inverse norm to calculate Z, they will just give you a negative because they assume that you the 5% is on the left-hand side. Uh, how come the left Z is negative, the, the right Z is positive? Because for standard normal distribution, we have the mean zero right in the middle. So we have positive Z on the right, negative on the left. So we have two Z, right? One on the left, one on the right of the center. On the left-hand side, that Z is supposed to be negative because the mean is zero right in the middle. So you have a negative Z and then you have a positive Z. So should I plug in the negative or positive to the formula? So do you see that the formula, there is a part plus or minus. So all you have to do is plug in the positive. You don't need to worry about the plus or minus because the plus or minus is built in in the formula. So all you have to do is just plug in the number to the uh, formula. So you will be able to calculate the lower limit and the upper limit. And then that sit for the graph. And then uh, for general idea of confidence interval. So what is confidence interval? Confidence interval is you start with a point estimate, you start with one number, and then you plus or minus another number that number is the margin of error. So you start with a point estimate x bar, and then you plus or minus margin of error, right? So how do you uh, explain this using a picture. So most of the textbook use this, this picture to explain. So I will use the same picture to explain it to you. So first you start with a meal. What is this meal? You don't know and you will never be able to find out. So you have no idea what the population mean is. You don't know, you will never be able to find out. So what you are doing right now is you are trying to guess what mu is using confidence interval. So starting with a point estimate, x bar, how do you get an x bar? 
So X bar is a sample mean. So that means you reach your hand inside the population. You grab some data out and then you calculate the average value. So that is X bar, right? So suppose my X bar is right here. Let's use an, another color for this. So suppose this is my X bar. The dot is my X bar. And then you add and subtract a margin of error. So you add and then you subtract a margin of error. So that is your first confidence interval. And then the next interval, your X bar is right here. And then you add and subtract a margin of error. And then the next interval, your X bar is right here. And then you add and subtract margin of error. And then the next interval, your X bar is right here. And then you add and subtract margin of error. And then the next interval, your X bar is right there and then you add and subtract a margin of error. How come we always start at a different point? The reason is you are taking random sample. So what is random sample? Random sample means every time you grab a bunch of data from a population, you get different values. So you get a set of different numbers every single time because they are all random. So that means you get a different X bar every single time. That means you start at a different location every single time. So in this picture, sometimes uh, the X bar is on the right hand side of the blue line, sometimes on the left, sometimes it's exactly on the blue line. So what does that mean? So confidence interval, let's say we took the 90% right here, the 90% confidence interval. We call this 90% CI. C stands for confident, I stands for interval. So what is 90% confidence interval mean? 90% confidence interval means I have many, many intervals. So imagine this, I keep doing this. I have one long blue line with many, many pink lines. 90% confidence interval mean 90% of this interval capture the true mean. What is capture the true mean? 90% of the interval. Let's write this down, interval. Capture the true mean. True mean mu. What is true mean? True mean is the blue line. What do I mean by capture? So the first capture is right here. The second one is right here. The third one is right here. And then the other two, they fail to capture the true mean. So that means if you have many, many intervals, 90% of them capture the true mean. So 90% of them grab the true mean. But how come we always start at a different point? Because the sample is a random sample. So that means you get a different X bar every single time. So if you keep doing this, you, you take a sample, calculate the X bar, and then you plus or minus margin of error. So every time you finish this process, you have a you have a pink line. So you keep doing this many, many times. After you finish this, you have many, many pink lines. 90% means 90% of the lines, they capture the true mean. Capture the true mean means the pink line touches the blue line. The pink line touches the blue line. Touches the blue line means the true mean is between the lower limit and the upper limit. So my 90% confidence interval has a lower limit comma and the upper limit, right? Capture the true mean means the number is between the lower limit and upper limit. So let's say uh, I have a confidence interval uh, 8 and 12. What does that mean? That means the mu, I still don't know what the mu is, but I am 90% confident that the, the, the mu, the, one, the, the number that we don't know is between 8 and 12. So that is the big picture of confidence interval. All right, so you have many, many pink lines. Each pink line stands for one interval. They, all, they are all different because you are using a random sample. You have a different starting point. So that's why they are all different. And then 90% means 90% uh, of the, of the lines, they grab the blue line. They capture the true mean, all right? What about 95%? 95% means 95% of the line capture the true mean, all right? So that is the basic concept of confidence interval. Hopefully my lesson you understand everything I said in this video. If you get everything I said in this video, you can easily learn the rest of the confidence interval in this lesson. All right. So in the next video, I will show you how to com compute confidence interval using your TI graphing calculator. All right. So if you think my lesson is helpful, as always, let me know in the comment section below. Like the video, subscribe to my channel, share the video for me. I appreciate your help. I see you all in the next lesson. Signing off for now.